Welcome back everyone, this is Mindy, and in today's video, I'm going to be creating a center picture window using the new heart window add-on. I'm going to start you off by taking a look at the supplies that I'll be using, starting with cardstock, ballet slippers, cilantro, chili pepper, mermaid, white, wood grain, and a piece of acetate. For the dies, I have the center picture window and also the heart add-on. I'll be using the shadow box card park add-on, slimline stitched hillside, outside in stitched hearts, lacy heart stackables, and the everyday sentiment banners. For stamps, I have special delivery, snow much fun, and den sweet den, because I can't get enough of these cute little bears. I have the Conversation Hearts Stencil, and for ink, I have Jet Black, Clear, Cilantro, Walnut, Chili Pepper, and Guava. For additional supplies, I'll be using the Lawn Fawn White Embossing Powder, a Craft Pick, Bone Folder, Tweezers, the Liquid Glue. I also have some Low Tack Tape, a Finger Dauber, and some Blending Tools and also my stamp chamois, and I have some Copic markers that I'll be coloring my images in with. Now I've gone ahead and picked out the images that I want to use for my card, and I stamped them all out onto the Lawn Fawn white cardstock using the jet black ink, and I'm starting to color the bears. These are just one of my favorite things, and I will have all of the colors listed at the top of the screen like I usually do. Now for the bears, this was an interesting color combination I discovered and played with and I've received some questions on. So for this particular one, I started with E35 as my darkest color and I added that to the outside edges of the bear and I also kind of defined the belly. I wanted it to look like a roly-poly belly. And then I added the E55, 53, and 51. So I did color the top portion of the bear, which I didn't need to on that full image, but I think it's always helpful to have it just in case my plans change. This piece I'm coloring right now is going to be added on top of the body of the bear, and it's going to, going to be holding a heart. So I wanted to leave all that coloring in, and I like to just have those images colored in just in case. So this color combination I think is just really soft and almost kind of cuddly looking. It's a warmer tone and I used it on all of the bears. Now this little one that looks like it's jumping, I also added that definition of the belly so that it looks like another little roly-poly bear. And I'm keeping the dark edges, keeping the shadow areas to the edges of the bear. So when I'm looking at an image, I try to pick first where do I want my highlights to be. And for me on these bears, it's going to be the center. So that just means my darkest color goes on the outside edges. Now for this one reaching up, I am having that highlight area be on the left hand side where it's reaching. And so its backside is going to have that darkest color and then just blending out with the remaining markers that I have. For the muzzle of all the bears, I'm not gonna do any shading to that. I am going to be just using an E41 marker to add a little bit of color difference to the bear. So no shading at all on there. And then for my owl, I decided for the head that the highlight area was gonna be right down the center. So I started out with the darkest color, which was E79, and then blending out with 77 and 74. And I wanted it a little bit lighter in the middle, so I brought in the E71. So I'm using those same colors on the wings. And for the wings, I'm doing a lot of flicking. So I'm not necessarily coloring. I'm just doing a flick of color. And that's going to make the edges a little uneven and a little makes it look like a feather more. Now for the body of the owl, I'm using E43, E41. I'm sorry, E43, 42, 41, and 40. Then for the beak and the feet, I have YR09 and YR12. For the hearts, which I honestly always find so tricky to color in, I have RV85, 83, and 11. Now for some of the letters, I did them in a light pink and a light blue, and I just kind of picked and choose. It didn't matter how many of each. So I have BG10 for the light blue 
and R83 is for the heart in the center, and the light pink envelope is RV10. Now on the hat, I kept that highlight area to the center, and I have BG49, BG13, and 32. Now I did forget to color, uh, I think the the band on the hat and a couple other things. So I did that off screen once I kind of caught myself on that. Now I did also stamp this cute little bird and the wings that are going to kind of hang on the side. And this is off of the special delivery stamp set. I used B060402 and 01. Once again, keeping the darkest color to the very outer edges and the lightest color to the center, which is going to match most of my other images. Once I have everything colored in, I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line them up over the images, and hold them in place with a low tack tape and run them through my die cut machine. Now you can use any type of low tack tape that you have, whether it's washi tape or a post-it tape, whatever you have will work perfectly. Now I'm going to work on die cutting. So this is one of the pieces out of the center picture window die. I die cut that from ballet slippers. This is another panel uh, using white cardstock. And now I have my cilantro that I'm using that park add-on. And I did some hills and the tops of the trees. The tree I die, die cut from wood grain cardstock. And I also die cut a piece uh, that die from the main center picture window out of the cilantro cardstock. And now I'm lining up that slimline stitched hillside. I thought it was just a lot easier that it'll match up with my card by die cutting it from that main panel first and then doing the stitched hillside. So I could have just showed you this to, to show you everything I die cut, but I thought it was best to actually see the dies and which pieces I was using from each set. So here's everything I have. Now I'm gonna die cut out that heart window. So there's that line there that's in your die. You're lining that up with the score line on your white cardstock and then hold that in place and that's going to die cut out the heart from the window. Now all my pieces are die cut, I'm going to work on my background. So here I bring in the trees and this is why I like having, thing, having everything die cut first. It helps me build my scene and I might want to change things. Now you'll notice that the stencil is smaller than the piece of cardstock, which is where those trees come in. The trees are going to hide those edges that are not covered by the stencil. So I'm holding my paper to the stencil with some low tack tape and also taped it down to my work surface. And I'm going to be ink blending the chili pepper ink first. So I'm starting from the top, blending down, just using a blending tool and my foam sponge that I have for the blending tool. And just lightly adding that onto the background. And this is the ballet slippers. Then I'm going to bring in the guava ink. And so I'm kind of two-toning it starting at the bottom, working my way up. Now, some of it you might not see, but I like to have it there just in case I decide to rearrange. Now, I wanna add a little bit of definition and color to the rest of my die cut pieces. So I am bringing in the cilantro hillside and I'm just gonna add some cilantro ink to this, starting at the very bottom of that stitched hill. And I'm also going to add it to the pieces I die cut for the tops of my trees and also that little hill that's going to go inside of our window. So just adding a little bit of color to it. It helps make the, the images look a little bit more dimensional. Then I'll bring in the trees and I'm going to be adding some walnut ink to the trees using a finger dabber. The finger dabber came in really handy because it works for small areas like this. So I didn't want the whole thing covered. I just want the very edges of the trees to have a little bit of extra color to them. Then I can move on to the actual assembly of the card. Now with adding a scene to the center picture window, what I found to work best was to add everything before I fold it as in, this stitched hillside. So I have the score lines because I die cut that from that original center picture window panel. So it's got the score line in there and I'm going to add this to my base with liquid glue. This is, I personally think the best thing to attach these center picture windows. That glue is amazing. So I have my hillside added first. 
Then I'm kind of placing things down so I know what I need to glue down first, what's going to go on top or underneath. So I have these little clouds on here. They are the furthest away. They're the, the main background way behind there. So they're getting glued down first. And that's just using some liquid glue to attach them and tucking them under my trees because the trees aren't glued down yet. So once I have all of the clouds down, then I can take the next piece, which is going to be the tree toppers. So the green part of the trees, and I will add those with the liquid glue. And these just tuck right in the corner. And you can see how those trees really did help kind of hide that area that the stencil didn't cover. And then I can add my tree trunks to that. So this is just a really cute scene in itself. Once these are all glued down, I'm going to work on doing some folding. So when I did the uh, die cutting of the picture window, it has some fold lines that we'll need to do. So for instance, these flaps on the edge. So there's one on each side. You just fold those over. There's also a fold line in the center too that we'll be folding. This is my little hill that's going to go in the inside of my picture window. So I'm just kind of pushing that in and folding those. There's also the fold in the middle that I'm folding and then I'm reinforcing those folds with my bone folder. I want to make sure they're really nice and crisp and that'll just help my picture window kind of pop out a little bit more when you make those folds uh, just really defined. And then folding in the middle there as well, right in the center of the heart. Then we can actually work on adhering this inside of our card. So we are only going to do one edge for right now. I'm just going to glue one side down. So once I have that lined up, I'm going to add liquid glue to just one side, one of the flaps. And I've used many different adhesives before with this. I've used double-sided tape and tape runner. By far, the liquid glue has been the best hold I have found. So here is the little hill that's going to go on the inside. I lined up where I wanted that to go, how high, and once again, only adding glue to that one side, that one flap. Now I do kind of go back and forth here between putting some images together. I want to go, I want to get my owl added in first. He's going to have the illusion of flying in the background. So I glued that together and I'm using this die out of the center picture window and I'm lining that T up in the center of my owl. That's going to give me a fold line just like my center picture window where the heart and the hill are folded in half. So I can fold my owl in half and I want to give the illusion of flying. So I took that acetate and I cut it into two quarter inch strips and then trim those strips down and I'm attaching these on each side of that fold line. So one on each side of the fold line and I'm using the liquid glue to attach that. I let that sit for I don't know, maybe 20, 30 seconds. I just want to make sure that that glue is really stuck to the acetate. And then I'm going to add that liquid glue to the bottom of the acetate. So that piece that's hanging out and I'm lining this up into that little hillside we have in there. A lot easier to just see it on camera, harder for me to explain, but I'm lining that in there. I could have just attached the owl to the hill, but I wanted it to be up a little bit. So using those acetate pieces just helps look like he's flying. So once that's done, I'm folding everything over. So right on those fold lines where it's right down the center of the image and the heart, open up those flaps. So we have one here with the green and one with the white that I'm adding the liquid glue. Now, one part I forgot to do was I didn't fold this middle piece. Remember, we attached everything before folding it, which is great, but I should have gotten this folded a little bit before adding that glue. So I just kind of worked it and I'm going to fold this over onto my flaps and I'm going to hold it here for a little bit, reinforce that line or that fold in the center of our card. And then afterwards, I can open this up and I have this cute little owl that looks like he's flying in there with some mail. And everything is really held down with that liquid glue. Now it's just a matter of assembly. So here's the bear that's two piece. I added the heart to the inside of those arms and then added that top portion of the bear to the body. And I just love how you have that belly definition. It just, I love the little chubby bear look. So now it's just a matter of preference where you want to add your images. The hardest part was just getting those flaps um, 
glued down to create that pop-up feature and that really isn't even too hard so once you get that down it's really easy the more you do it the easier and more comfortable you are with it and it'll be a just a snap to create these picture window cards so I have some little bears that are either receiving mail or sending mail, and I'm just making sure that when I'm adding the liquid glue, it's not going to be on the piece that is overlapping that heart window. Now I have this fun little bear, and he's going to be jumping in a pile of mail that I'm going to create down at the bottom there. There's also going to be a couple thrown up in the air. This bear is super happy he is getting mail. <laughs> Off screen, I did go ahead and heat emboss a sentiment, the special delivery onto some mermaid cardstock. And I'm taking this T piece, lining that up with my sentiment, and I'm gonna add that fold line right in the center. So you could totally do this on your own. You wouldn't necessarily need that piece, but I just thought it was super helpful because that helps me position it right in the center. And then using liquid glue, I'm gonna add that right to the top and I'm adding it to the actual card, not the sentiment. That way I'm not worried about any of the glue uh, getting stuck where it shouldn't be. I don't, I don't want my card glued together. <laughs> now I'm gonna do the front real quick. And sometimes when you run your dies through your die cut machine, you know, if your plates have a lot going on, it can leave little marks on the backside of your cardstock. So I cut a piece of ballet slipper cardstock that fit the same size as the front of the card. And I just adhered that to the top. That way it's a really nice and clean look and hides any of those lines that my embossing plates might've used or my die cutting plates might've used. Then I'm adding on this scalloped heart that I die cut from chili pepper cardstock. And I have a stitched heart, stitched heart here from white. And I'm keeping this really simple. I'm just adding um, this cute little bird to the front since I have a lot of action going on in the front, in the inside of the card. I just left this little bird to kind of be the, the surprise keeper. He's the secret keeper. And that finishes off our center picture window card. These are really fun. I really need to do these more often because like I said, once you get the hang of them, they are just really easy to do and so much you can do with these scenes. So this was really cute. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too and gave you some ideas to use some of those winter stamp, stamp sets that you might have. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again real soon.